Do you know, that was our technology that was stolen by Russia. And Russia has them, and I started them very quickly. But somebody gave Russia, years ago, before me, all of our plans and specs for hypersonic missiles, and they built them, and we didn't. It's pretty clear. You're the it's pretty clear you won't admit no, you're that the, the Russians have engaged in cyber attacks against the United States of America, that you encouraged espionage against our people. He said Bill Clinton. It could be. It might have been, in all fairness, it might have been a little after Bill Clinton. I used to like Bill Clinton. Can you believe it? It, it, it could have been Barack Hussein Obama, perhaps we should ask him. That you are willing to spout the Putin line, sign up for his wish list, break up NATO, do whatever he wants to do, and that you continue to get help from him because he has a very clear favorite in this race. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And folks, we got to talk about the sheer madness of Donald Trump and his band of misfit followers. It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. You just can't look away, even though you know it's going to be ugly. It could have been Barack Hussein Obama, perhaps we should ask him. Now, he was very nasty last night. I try and be nice to people, you know? But it's a little tough when they get personal. But what makes it all the more ridiculous is how Trump's obsession with Putin and his weird grudge against Obama keeps fueling his dumpster fire. So let's dive in, shall we? I try to be nice to people, Trump says with a straight face, no less. Yeah, nice like a rattlesnake. This is the same guy who pushed the birther conspiracy for years, mocked a disabled man on live TV, and bragged about sexually assaulting women before he was even elected. Nice? Yeah, right. He wouldn't know nice if it bit him in the ass. His version of nice ain't in any dictionary that I've ever seen. This fella talks like a third grader, and no offense to third graders, but come on, is that really his audience? Who would you rather have president, uh, Joe Biden or Vladimir Putin? Oh, Putin. Definitely. And, and, why, and why is that? Um, I believe he's been given a tough... Uh, since, since World War II, uh, Russia's been the bad guy. When in actuality, the Nazis left Germany and they ended up going to the Ukraine, coming in here. George Bush was, was actually... <laughs> thank you. George Bush was actually a Nazi. Why do these Trump lovers act the way that they do? It's simple. They're brainwashed by in anything goes media. God help us, folks. Now let's talk about Trump, the treasonous traitor. You know, the guy who stole top secret documents. It ain't rocket science, folks. Trump doesn't even read. Those papers weren't bedtime stories. He took them to sell them. Lock him up already. He sold out America more times than a yard sale. And you know what? We should have listened to Hillary. Imagine not dealing with this circus if she'd been president. It's a damn shame. We're talking biggest vindication in America. American politics here. She's going to be remembered as the one who had Trump's number from day one. When Biden sent Kamala to Europe to stop the war in Ukraine, she met with Putin and then three days later he attacked. How did she do? You think she did a good job? And just as a, a quick clarification, we don't have confirmation that uh, the vice president went to Russia to meet with Vladimir Putin. I know she went over to Europe right before the, uh, the incursion when Russia invaded Ukraine, and it's a war that's still going on right now. I've heard, I've heard that said a lot. You don't have confirmation that that's true? No, I don't, I don't think that, I don't know if the vice president ever met uh, Vladimir Putin. Trump and his cronies accepted foreign interference in our elections. They refused to hold anyone accountable. We were on a one-way ticket to this mess. War in Europe with Russia and a divided America with Republicans cheerleading for Putin like he's their high school crush? Putin knew Trump was his lapdog, had him on a leash for four years, feeding him God knows what what intel? It's mind-boggling. Since when did Republicans start siding with Russia? Whatever happened to the Reagan Republicans? This whole situation is like a bad episode of The Twilight Zone. Now, Donald's at it again, melting down about Obama. It's downright hilarious. Trump knows he'll never be as cool or as loved as President Obama. He's been overcompensating since the National Correspondents' Dinner was roast. I watch that on loop sometimes. I just see Donald Trump squirm like a pig in a poke. And what's even better? He's now whining about being called out for whining. Thin-skinned as an onion, folks. One poke, and he's a blubbering mess. Now let's Let's move on to Trump's pick for vice president, J.D. Vance, you know, Putin's favorite senator. Everybody with a brain in their head, Jake, knows that this was always going to end in negotiation. The idea 
that Ukraine was going to throw Russia back to the 1991 borders was preposterous. Nobody actually believed it. Ukraine is functionally destroyed as a country. This guy is the most anti-Ukrainian politician in the United States, and his comments are more dangerous than a rabid coon. Claiming Ukraine is functionally destroyed is pure horse. It disrespects the courage of the Ukrainian people and gives Putin exactly what he wants. And suggesting they give up territory? That's like telling your neighbor to hand over their house keys to a burglar. It's an affront to sovereignty and democracy. We need to stand with Ukraine in their fight for independence, not hand them over on a silver platter. Courage and capability go hand in hand, and the Ukrainians have shown that they've got plenty of both. Now, if some neighboring country invaded us, would Vance be singing the same tune? Because I doubt it. This man's face is a new poster child for neo-fascism. And did you see him during that speech? You could tell his handler was giving him the shut the hell up look. Vance was lost as a ball in high weeds. But fear not, because Kamala Harris is about to put a stop to all of this fascist nonsense. She's going to rock this election. Joe Biden picked a damn good one in Kamala Harris, and she's dusted off her briefcase, and she's ready to re-enter the courtroom. Watch as Donald Trump has embraced Putin. Watch that. It's not just happening today, it's been happening. As he, Trump, threatened to abandon NATO and encouraged Putin to invade our allies, he even said Russia can, and I'm going to quote him now, and forgive the use of the word, but he, he said, quote, Russia can, quote, do whatever the hell they want. And he wants to be the President of the United States? And understand, as Trump bows down to dictators, he makes America weak. And that is disqualifying for someone who wants to be Commander-in-Chief of the United States of America. Trump's butt-kissing to Putin and other dictators? Yeah, that's a one-way ticket to disqualification, folks. We need a president who stands up to authoritarian bullies, not one who bends over for them. And Kamala, she's going to do just that. Mark my words. So there you have it, folks. A full rundown of why Trump and his merry band of misfits are nothing but trouble. We've got to stay sharp, keep calling out the nonsense, and most importantly, get behind leaders like Kamala Harris who know how to stand up to bullies and keep this country on the right track. Let's not let history repeat itself. And that's a fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.